Uh, yes, I'm uh, checking continuity on a dual 1019 turntable. One thing that can happen over time is that the wire connections can break down. Um, they can uh, uh, oxidize and cause more resistance, which will cause noise and hum on the signal. Now, I've been checking this one, and I did find a bad one. I'm uh, tracing the signal flow from the head shell with the dual design. Some of the dual designs, they've got uh, metal contacts in the head shell that uh, a head shell sled connects to. With, with, no, no, sometimes the spring connections are in the head shell, and sometimes the spring connections are on the sled. This one has the spring connections inside the head shell. And some of the 1019s have the uh, spring connections in the sled. So there are different designs of the 1019, which is confusing. Um, right now, I'm just using a cheap Harbor Freight multimeter that you can get for under $10. So there's really no excuse for not having one. Um, no, I'm connected to one of the grounds on uh, um, patch cable, stereo patch cable. And let me see, let me probe in here now. I'm. Uh, it is a little hard to get to. I, I took the counterweight off. I've got it on its back. You obviously want to be careful when you're doing this. But you can do it without uh, uh, unscrewing the tone arm to loosen that up, which is kind of dangerous because you could break the wires and break something else. So I've got it like this, and it's, it's actually pretty stable. I like that with the counterweight off, but still, uh, I'm still holding it with my arm like this. So I forget which pin that was, but there's five. The center one's for ground, and then so are, are so a couple others. So right now, okay, nothing there. Uh, nothing there. Okay, that's the center, so you get continuity there. And then the one over the, uh, and this is the, the one uh, for one side of the stereo. So with the, the one side, you're going to have a ground and, the, and then, then the center um, hot wire, I'll call it, for the stereo signal. Okay, now we'll check the center. Check the center hot. Now this is the one I was having problems with. Like I said, over time, the copper wire can break down and, and develop resistance from oxidation, and also cold solder joints. I'm getting about I'm getting erratic resistance right now. It's at 18. You don't want it at that high. Um, you want it around one or two, like I'm getting with the other ones. Now this is for one side. One side was 18. Now I'll go to the center of the, the other one, color-coded red. And you can see I'm getting about, I'm getting 1.6, 1.7 is fluctuating, but it's under 2 and that's acceptable. Um, I'm also uh, seeing that the metal contacts in the head shell are heavily oxidized, almost black, which is uh, not good for conducting at all. So uh, one thing you can do with that is I've got a little piece of 400 grit wet dry sandpaper, and I'm just going to uh, show you how to do that right now. And it cleans right up. Yeah, obviously you want to be careful. Now on uh, on some dual 19s, uh, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, they aren't springed like that. So this is a little bit easier to get to their spring, and I'm just kind of pressing on that with my thumb and then drawing it up, and the contacts are are nice and uh, nice and shiny. Now. Um, It's uh, going to be a little bit harder to do. You could, uh, on on, uh, on some of the dual uh, 1019s that, that don't have the springed head shell contacts, you could get in there with a little tiny jeweler screwdriver and just scrape away until it, 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 with burnishing like that until you get all the contacts clean and then apply some dielectric grease. Let me see what kind of time I've got now. Oh, boy, running out of time. I'll have to do another video.
I only have about five minutes left on this card here.